Alright, so as mentioned in the previous video, when I was showing you how to install Window Builder in Eclipse, we are going to create a login form, so a simple login form. So now that Window Builder is installed, we're going to be creating a simple login form, alright? So this is what we'll be creating. So we'll need two descriptive labels, one for the username and then one for password. We'll also need two input fields, all right? So one text field for the username and a password field for the password. We'll also need a login button, all right? So let's just switch over to Eclipse and start that. All right, now remember we would have generated this from the previous video. So, so what we're looking at now was generated from the previous video when we were installing Window Builder. All right, so you can just rewatch that video just to get yourself to this particular point, all right? Now, just to point out a few things, you see we, we have our palette right here. Now, with the palette, there are different containers and also different components that we can make use of. Now, currently, if we check properties, all right, so we are on the properties now, all right, for our frame, for our application right here. Now, the property is set to border layout. I'm going to change this to absolute, all right? So absolute is a little bit easier to work with, well, for me, when I want to put the components in different places, all right? Now, if you remember again, the first thing that we need are two labels. All right, so I'm just going to click and add our label. All right, let me just add another label. All right. So there we go. Those are our two labels. All right, so for the first label, I'm going to click on it. Go over the properties. Where it says text, I'm going to change the text. So username, all right, and OK. I'm going to do the same thing for the second label. Go to properties, go to text, and I'm going to change the text to password, all right. So I'm going to click on OK. All right, now we can make adjustments to the font. So I'm going to change the font size I'm not going to trouble the style i'm just going to change the font size all right so let's make some changes to the font all right so while we're the label is selected we're going to go back to properties go to font select that um let's make the font about 14 all right i'm going to stick with the same font style all right, so just click on, well, the same font family and the same font style. And just click on OK. So I now need to make some adjustments here. All right. All right, much better. All right, we'll do the same thing for username. So click on the username label. Go to properties, select the font. Keeping the same font family, the same font style, and adjusting the size to 14. All right. All right, so there we go. All right, so we need three more things. So we need a text field so the user can enter their username. All right, let's adjust it a little. And we also need a password field. Now, luckily for us, a password field is presented under the palette. So we just select the password field, and add that. And here we go. So we need one more thing now, and that is a button. So we need a button to click. So for our login button, we we'll select and we'll just 
at this button. All right. All right, so let's change the text on the button. So while the button is still selected, we'll go to properties, where it says text, we'll change that to login. All right, um, let's just change the font as well. Maybe, 12 all right all right now that is basically the front end of things all right now something else i want to do as well is to change the variable names for the text field and the password field right here all right so i'm going to change the variable names so i'm going to click on the text field for username over the properties where it says variable, I'm going to change that to txt user. So I'm going to change it to txt user. All right. And the variable name for password, I'm going to change that. All right. So I'm going to change that to pass. All right. So at least it's easier for us to remember um, what the variable name is. All right, no, that should be good. All right, now we want to write some code. So what we can do is we can either double click on the login button here, or we can simply click on this, sorry, click on source. All right, so I'm going to go back to design. I'm going to double click because it will take me directly to where I want to go or as close as possible. All right, now this is the event and the for our for our button right so it's waiting on some action it's waiting on the button to be clicked and you can see here as well the action listener was added right so it's listening for some event which in this case will be the button click all right so inside of our um button event we're going to add a few things so i'm going to start by adding a well, adding two string variables. All right, so I'm going to call it you name for username. All right, and we're going to set this equal to remember what we had called the the username text field. We're going to set this equal to txt user dot and we want we want to know get the text when the user enter their username so we're going to say get text this is a built-in method all right and we want to do the same thing for the password so we're going to say String and well, we are going to say um, P W O R D. All right, we're going to set this equal to we had called we had changed the password, the password field use and variable name. We had changed it to pass. So we're going to type pass dot get. T that text right now you realize that the get text has a strike through it because we are using the text field which means that the password will not be shown as plain text I right? said so it will hide the the password for us when that is entered all right now Still inside our button, all right? We want to write a little if statement to check if the password is equal to um, a particular set of characters and also if the username is correct. 
So if the username and password are correct, then the user will get a message saying that login successful. All right, so let's just use that statement. All right, so we're going to utilize the, the string manipulator here that is called equals. So we're going to say you name that equals And by default, we're going to set this to, well, we're just going to set the username as test. All right. And we're also going to set the password. We're going to set a default password. All right, so let's set this as one, two, three, four, five. All right. All right, so inside of our if statement, no, we're going to use a J option pane. So the J option pin will display our message. So we're going to say J option pin show message. All right, so use no words show message dialog. All right, so let's set our parent component to null. Then let's set a message. Let's put, um, let's just say login was successful. All right. No, if the username entered is test and the password is one, two, three, four, five, then a J option pane dialog box should come up and say login was successful. No, let's write the else portion to this. Else. All right, else it will say to us, let me just copy this, all right? Now remember, you can always copy and paste code as long as you know what you are copy and pasting. All right, so else it will say, wrong username, or password all right yeah and that is about it all right so most of this code was generated for us no the only thing that we wrote is what is inside here inside our button all right more specifically inside the action portion of our button All right. All right. So you might notice here it says that the method get text from the type J password field is deprecated. All right. So for security reasons, it well Java is suggesting that or Java gave us a better option, which is the get password. All right. All right, so I'd have to give you further explanation in terms of how the get password work, but that's not the purpose of this particular video. All right, so let me just leave it as get text, all right? But I will, at some point in time, 
in the future explain the use of the get password all right so let's run this and see what will happen all right all right now if you notice it produces our our login form so again our username is test so let's type test and the password is one two three four five all right and it tells us that login was successful all right all right so even though it told us that the get text was deprecated for the j password field it still work all right um but if you are doing application for production purposes i would strongly suggest the use of get password all right now let's change the password here so probably like a b c one two three click on login no this is still not the wrong username or password all right so basically just a simple demonstration so let me just close this out now going back to the design you'll first install jbuilder into eclipse which was done in the previous video all right and then we will construct our form two labels one for username one for password two input fields a text field for the username and a password field for the password and then our login button all right now in the source we added this bit of code and that is it basically all right so until next time remember to install your window builder and then just try out this simple GUI application and then next time we will move on to i guess something a little bit more interesting all right guys